Welcome everyone to part four of our five part series. This is of the refrigeration design using distributed pipe work software. Super excited about today's conversation because we're going to be diving in how to design a full pipe work for a medium sized convenience store. And this is really, there's thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of these stores out there. And we're going to get in a good conversation today. James, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Thank you, Trevor. And uh, welcome to everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, really excited about this uh, session. Um, this one's a little different. I'm going to be working in imperial units of measure. I'm more familiar with SI, so please do bear with me um, um, if I'm a little slow off the mark. But my intention this evening is um, to look at an, a, a small, real small convenience store with 11, uh, 12 foot chilled food display cases in, uh, provided layout drawing and an isometric within the presentation, numbered it all up. And my intention is I'm gonna time myself to see, just to demonstrate and show how quick it is to use the software and to size all the pipe work for a CO2 system, medium temperature system for a convenience store. That's the aim of the game today. So. Speed and we're going to we're going to get to watch this whole thing, You're right, James? Get to watch me. I'm going to be very quiet whilst I'm um, whilst I'm working away. So hopefully your network connection remains, Trevor, so you can keep <laughs> yeah. talking and to oh, everybody. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I've got some repetitivity on the slides, but I think that's important. I want to go through the terminology um, yeah. today as well, just in preparation for me to uh, get started with the calculations. Yeah, I think we should just dive into it because That's we, can, we can go for a couple hours usually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just share my screen with everybody. Yeah, please do. There we go. So welcome everybody to mini series demo four. So little history lesson for everybody. I'm sure a lot of will have already heard this white road software developed by my good friend the late great ian ramsey uh, my number one mentor that i've had it's been used in the uk and beyond for over 30 years just uk alone over thirty thousand individual systems are currently operating using the software that goes from the humble condensing unit all the way up to uh, large supermarket racks all the way to blast freezers all the way to to large um, ammonia glycol systems in distribution centers the key thing is it eliminates the need to size refrigeration services using charts. And as such, it takes away human error, but it saves time. So the software program, like any program, it works on a basis of user-defined parameters. So there's a little element of if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. If you put good things in, you get good, good results out. And also there's the learning experience in knowing what exactly we're looking at. So the software itself calculates suction, liquid discharge, liquid drain, relief and vent lines. And also for every single circuit, we can have vents, we can have valves and bends to each circuit. Effectively, we can mimic a real life installation and actually account for those small line losses that can occur in a single line that can account to quite a big loss overall if you have a large distributed system. So what is the software? So here we go. We've got display cases or showcases. We've got a package rack system and a condenser or gas cooler. So where we see the jigsaw pieces, this is what I'm going to be doing this evening. It's connecting the pipe work between the showcases to the rack and from the rack to the condenser. In this instance, gas cooler, because I'm going to concentrate on CO2 this evening. So I said, saves time, saves money, increases productivity, allows a design engineer to focus on other things away from simply just sizing pipe work. It includes natural refrigerants, CO2, ammonia, hydrocarbons, also synthetic refrigerants, including 448 and 449A. The demonstration, again, CO2 in a retail convenience store application. Terminology that you hear with Micropipe. So those of you who want to trial demo of the software, do reach out to me and Trevor. Um, so what, what the software calls for is design, you, design entries. These are used defined. So evaporating temperature, soup heat value, maximum and minimum liquid temperatures, condensing temperature, liquid line rises, and maximum line penalties. 
terminology circuit that's one individual refrigerant light refrigeration line a terminal that's that's a that's a piece of pipe work that has a load or duty connected to it like a display case a network piece of pipe that's a circuit that's actually carrying the load or duty next flow path label it's very intuitive quite simple and logical to use um, so we number up from the isometric so if it's circuit one circuit one may go into number two three four or five but it's sequential and the software does call up if you try to label more than two two circuit numbers as your next flow label for suction line oil risers we can it calls on and allows us to put minimum duty for oil return really cool feature so we don't oversize those risers which can cause a lot of problem in winter months or in the summer months if we've got a riser too small we can get excessive line losses and penalties within that system so again this session is going to show how uk designers like myself apply micropipe in retail supermarket refrigeration so effectively once an isometric schematic detailing services route has been sketched by the designer it is numbered starting at the furthest fixture or display case or perhaps cold room cooler in the system and then from there you work back towards the rack duties are also added to the schematic to terminal circuits with lengths of each circuit being added so for this demonstration as i said at the beginning i'm applying imperial units of measure feet pounds per square inch and btus british thermal units generally i'd apply meters I'd apply kilowatts and I'd apply bar as a tem temperature of pressure, as a measure of pressure. I appreciate that, uh, James, <laughs> because I'm learning every <laughs> week of the conversions, but. Um, yeah, no, and it's uh, it, it's quite a tough one. You know, you, you, so, you get so used as a designer to working in one. And, and the irony is pre 19, mid 1970s, we just, you, we followed the Imperial system in the uk we kind of use a blend of both now following our exit from the eu so first of all i'm going to i'm going to size the suction side of the system then calculate it using micropipe followed by the liquid side 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 this is where the demo showcases the software speed and just how quick you can use the software we've we can provide design engineer guidance notes to design a refrigeration system using micropipe this can be provided to anyone interested to obtaining a free trial of the software. Just let us know. We just won't issue you a trial and expect you to be able to just carry on and, and start designing. We've got videos on Refrigeration Mentors YouTube channel, but I'm also here for retail refrigeration. That's my background, but I can also help out if somebody wants to use the software for other applications as well so you know we can we can use the software to size uh secondary glycol lines for example so it's a great piece of software great tool so it just doesn't extend to supermarket refrigeration and i am on call for anybody who might want to look at something a little different so we're getting now to the uh crooks this is the final slide before i open the software and I size a 25 circuit software. To the top left of the screen, the yellow blocks, they're representative of 11 display cases made up of an island run of four cases, a rear wall run of four cases, then a run of three cases, going to a pack and to a gas cooler. So you'll be able to see with the orange lines where I've shown the service routes and the drops to the runs. Um, so moving to the right hand side, just a simple crude isometric that I've um, created. So effectively, I've numbered from the furthest service service, the display case that is furthest away from the pack, that circuit one, then circuit two is the display case adjacent to it, then it falls into a network. So that network is carrying the duties from display cases one and two. Circuit four, again, is a display case, circuit five, then be carries the duties of the first three display cases, so on and so forth. You're able to see that circuit 14 is a suction riser, as is circuit 23. So I'm gonna start launching the software now. I'm actually gonna time myself to see 
just how long it takes because one thing i can guarantee to everybody on the call from sizing if you were to draw this isometric yourselves which a lot of design engineers will do and then get the charts out and start furthest away those first few circuits nice and easy but then you've got to remember to add up what you've already worked out to accommodate and account for the losses within that system and what i like and what i noticed over time working with you is that you're well organized so i think as a designer you do have to be a bit organized when you're going to do a design and understand where to start and where to end and i'm sure you learn this when you're doing the training or when you're mentoring under someone or or someone you have a coach or someone guiding you you know uh, but it's from what i've seen when you're organized doing these man they they for me, who's not a designer, seem, it gets easier and easier watching the, the process as you do it. So one thing, just be organized when you're, when you're laying out these stores. Absolutely. And, and, and that's the key. And, and not to forget as well, I've used the software for nearly 20 years now. So yeah. it becomes a little bit second nature. So, um, but like anything, it's just like any piece of software or anything that we do things become much easier with time and experience. So I'm going to share my screen um, do. and hopefully we can all see that. This is the home screen of Micropipe. So as I promised myself, I'm going to just set my, set my stopwatch on, go. So that's just a case of accepting. So I want to start a new project. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. So as you can see, you've got one of one, we're gonna have 25 circuits. So, but I'm gonna stop talking and just get selecting here. So and you're gonna see more and more of these stores. I've been doing CO2 Mondays for over 20 weeks now and talking with different manufacturers, different technicians, different engineers, and different designers. And you're gonna see a lot more of these convenience stores, this size for CO2, continuing to grow. I've talked to more and more uh, contractors who are working with end users that the, now the end users are asking for a more, um, more low GWP or more, you know, more environmentally friendly uh, refrigerant and I think the big thing is is when I talk with contractors that work with um, end users who's been in business for 40 50 60 years uh, over the last 20 25 years some of them say they've changed the gas four or five times on that same system so like every five to ten years there was a, a replacement of gas and so with co2 with natural refrigerants here's a, almost an opportunity where you're going to potentially use that one gas until some other technology comes out and that you may not need a refrigerant at all and i don't, I don't know when that that'll be james but um uh, please don't say that trevor we, we <laughs> want <your help. laughs> but it, but it's really uh important to understand but you're that. absolutely correct. It's, um, you know, we've had similar thing, the uh, number of gas change outs, you know, over the years, it's, it's getting through them pretty quick. Hey everybody, I'm not sure. I think Trevor may have dropped out. I'm actually not looking at the screen at the moment at the video. I'm just concentrating on the software. Um, but if you bear with us, I'm sure Trevor will eat. Yeah, I think I'm back now. can you hear me yeah, i can hear you now trevor can you hear me yeah yeah 
I, I oh, just okay. sorry everyone. I keep cutting out here. My internet connection is not super strong, but you know, network nine or terminal nine. So yeah, we're on number eleven now. Oh, okay. It's a little delay for me. But once again, as I was saying, you're going to consistently see more and more CO2 applications uh, coming, um, both in the commercial refrigeration as well as the commercial HVAC side. I was speaking with um, our NAG last week, um, a great gentleman, Philip Walker. He's the director of refrigeration for um, our NAG Canada. And he has mentioned that they've, they've done multiple uh, unit uh, systems for uh, uh, multi apartment units, so complexes where they're pushing and using uh, CO2 uh, as their their heat pump. So you're going to see more and more of that. I see it. I see it going to be happening here in Canada for sure. The way uh, regulations are coming, uh, so more electrification, if you know what that is, moving away from boilers and natural gas uh, into these new CO2 heat pumps. It's coming, Trevor, it's coming. There's, uh, there's big headwinds and, you know, CO2 a little less efficient um, than synthetics in refrigeration, but when we start layering in heat recovery, um, you know, we get to good parity, but when we use CO2 as a, um, as a refrigerant for heat pump systems, hey, that's where we start to see some big, big wins in terms of not just GWP, but energy as well. So, yeah. It's, so it's, so it's in refrigeration, you say it's CO2 is less efficient. How? It, it's, it's, it's less efficient, Trevor. It's, uh, it's these, the working pressures. So if you were to do a calculation, if you would select the easiest way to demonstrate that is um, if you put like scenarios in um in a full range of condensing and ambient temperature profiles when you select a compressor it's got a lower it's got a lower clp um much lower in transcritical so above 31 celsius but when we get to lower ambient bandings uh, we see more we see more parity with synthetics but overall but where co2 becomes a real winner is when is for me I'd like to see see that because I've Boom. looked at both and I've seen Boom. it in scenarios Boom. where CO2 is more efficient than synthetics. So I've never ever seen it. Hey, that's a, I've never hey, seen right, hey, that's that's a, that's an awesome set, setting. We should we should get a we should get a session going there. Um, you know, between the number and and let's look at these things because it's really cool. I'm really keen to to learn all the time, Trevor. You know, if uh, if I've missed something, you know. Hey, I'd like to be, I'd like to be told I, I like to learn every day as I know you do. Yeah. Cause you look at compression ratio and it depends where you're at. Like here in Canada, you're going to, you can be in subcritical all the time. And then Absolutely. when you start to yeah, add, like yeah. you said, cause we do a lot of, uh, heat reclaim, hot gas, all that stuff. When you put it all together, you know, your CO2 is what is more efficient, you know? So it all depends depending on the application for me from what i've seen and all the studies i've read and stuff but there's going to be other people that you know the studies they they've done so it all depends on the application so absolutely and it's great to share these studies as well isn't it trevor you know because it's uh you know as you say for a given application and sometimes as well when we look at comparison sometimes comparisons aren't what the scene between um one system and another system, you know, if, you know, because we, we might be measuring something which is um, a brand new system, we might be comparing it against a 10, 15 year old system, which hasn't been maintained particularly well. Mm -hmm. And it's showing off the new system is, yeah, it's, it's much more efficient, but the reality is it could be a case of, you know, um, it could very well be a case that the system it's itself, you know, the, the older system, just needed some just needed some love and love and care which sometimes they don't get and that's not to blame the technicians sometimes that can be down to work constraints and and how much the customer's prepared to pay for a service as well yeah and it's even for if you have a store beside each other so two exact same design stores one beside the other 
is that really an apples to apples comparison because different maybe the sun hits this one differently maybe it's placed on the roof a little differently like there's so many little things that you know is the store layout exactly the same is there more foot traffic in one store versus the other store Absolutely. does the people open these doors more than those doors so it's real tough to have because I used to think, oh, you have the same store, you have all the same equipment, it's apples to apples, but not necessarily. <laughs> hey, absolutely. Hey, Trevor, so I've calculated the suction side of the software, so it's taken me eight minutes 30. So I'm just going to run through with everybody. So yeah. overall, I should be looking at a duty of 100. Yeah, so I'm good there with my duty. Um, looking down, what I'm, what I'm looking for here is I'm wanting to ideally, um, so to be keeping my uh, horizontal pipe work kind of below 1750 feet per minute and the suction line rises. So I've only got two rises here, but between two and 3000 feet per minute. So I'm just gonna quickly go through. Yeah, I'm good with these. And bearing in mind, everybody, you know, this is something I, I use this software all the time. So, so yeah, I'm good with that riser size, let's see absolutely fine Sixteen fifty, good with that awesome and i'm good with all the uh the penalties so i'm going to save this suction So now what we need to do is we need to transfer the suction pipe work, the suction into the liquid. So what it's actually going to do here is it's going to grab all 25 circuits and all the pipe work lengths, and it's going to convert it to a suction line calculation. So go to the top, data transfer, transfer network data from suction to liquid. All the current liquid data will be lost. Well, that's cool because even if there is any data there, that's from a previous project. So clicking on the liquid tab, you can see we've now got 25, but they're all blank. So let's go to those design entries. I'm just gonna check these, check these out. Yeah, I'm happy with those. And this is where Micropipe gets pretty awesome. Hit the button and we've calculated the liquid all 25 liquid lines just like that so i'm going to um review these um terminal ends i don't want anything above 200 feet per minute um ideally nothing above 300 feet per minute so i'm going to just quickly check Awesome. So currently everybody we're on 12 minutes and we've calculated the suction liquid lines of a 25 circuit um, distributed pipe work system for a convenience store. So now, now what we want to do is we want to transfer, we want to, we've got a, a discharge line. So I'm going to hit the discharge tab. I'm going to start, start afresh. So hitting terminal. And I'm going to allow 60 feet here. One, two, three, four, five, six bends. We'll put a ball valve there. Number one. Just make sure it's I'm happy with no.
I set the discharge pressure at 2,000 PSI. There we go. So we've calculated the discharge line out as well. Wow. I'm always impressed to, to see how quick that happens after you do the suction line, how quick it is to get all the other lines. It's, it's, it's the, the downside. I'm a big fan of uh, And I think, and actually Trevor, we're talking about CO2. Um, um, I'm going to stop sharing so I can, so I can see, I think one of the, um, Great things as well with CO2 where we talk efficiencies is very efficient in low temperature in frozen applications. So if we have a booster system and we're taking that low temperature compressors discharge, and we're putting it into the suction um, side of the empty and a booster application. That's where we see some energy gains as well with CO2. The only downside there from using micropipe is you've got to do to, you've got to do your, your medium temperature or chilled suction line calculation your low temperature liquid low temperature suction calculation and then you have to do a common line you don't have to you could replicate the data from suction should look to save your customer some money and use a common liquid line so in those applications a calculation can take a little bit longer but uh, but i'm really pleased about this i think just with the descriptions i think We've got here within sort of 15 minutes from yeah. starting. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Yeah, me too. I think that's a, a new record. And once again, everyone, James, like he said, he's used this software for 20 years. He understands it, but you can too. You know, you, you just you play around with it. Mm -hmm. You try it and you test it. And it's like anything. It's like riding a bike the first few times. It, you know, it takes a little bit to get on and get started. But after you get started, you can just be like James. Um, and, and go through that because you are engineers, you understand how to size it. And this is, once again, the people that have tried the demo, a lot of them email me back and say, like, wow, I can't believe I've, I haven't been using this yet or haven't used something like this compared to uh, a single line software. Because maybe that's a lot of what you guys are using. You know, you do one line, then the next line, and okay, and then the next one, and the next one. And you, and you save a lot more time compared to charts for sure but it's not a full distributed system. And that's what a lot of people are coming back to me and tell me, holy man, this is really, really intuitive. And one thing is they'd say, oh, it seems like they're back in the 90s, but they're like, they're still happy how quickly they can size a whole system. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, it's, it's it come to a point where, you know, talking to some uh, uh, development partners to modernize the software. Um, I've, I know one of the guys is on the line, so, you know, I'll just say, quick shout out shout out and hello to andrew you know i think once we once we take the code and we take it away from visual basic we use the code as it is but we introduce it onto a new platform hey i'm not sure how that happens i'm not a, an it or a coding specialist but what i do know once once we host it and it's cloud based a cloud based solution it's going to be it's going to come kicking and screaming into the 21st century I think the the great thing for me though is at least we can use software for the common range of refrigerants which are growing in traction every day such as co2 ammonia hydrocarbons and we've got the lowest global warming potential of the hfcs which are 448 or 449a um you know it's I'd, I'd, i really hope to think that you know people don't open the software and select our 404a as a refrigerant you know but you know, sometimes customer demands and requests. We're not in control of that, but hopefully not too many people use that you use that button when they select a refrigerant nowadays. So so that's that's amazing. Like once again, doing a sizing that quick. And as you get better at it and more and more with the software, it'll get easier. I'd love to see if anyone has any questions, anything that they would like James Absolutely. to show them how to use it if you already have the software if you have a demo version or if you're looking to get a demo version because this is important these questions because we do get questions after people have the the demo version um, and we even had a few people where we had to do a private demo of it and afterwards they're like wow i just needed those two or three tips that you just showed me and off to the races so if you have any questions this is a great time to ask
or indeed shout out afterwards you know if if you want a copy of the demonstration of the software you know if you've got no necessarily questions here and now you know that's that's absolutely fine but you know i'm i'm on hand as is trevor to launch and provide demonstration versions of the software yeah this has been awesome this has been awesome I'll be honest, I surprised myself. Uh, I, <laughs> he didn't, uh, he, I tell you, this is hurting. So are you still there, James? So just for Tremaine, um, yeah, I'm here, Trevor. So I'll just continue with there's a question in chat from Tremaine um, in terms of how to get a demo version. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to go back into the presentation. Um, and if I hit everybody with the um, last slide. There it is. Just send myself and Trevor an email. So info at refrigerationmentor.com and info at amiga solution amiga hyphen solutions.co.uk and we'll get a demo sent straight out with some design engineer usage notes and also we've got some um, you know i've got another document about line sizing which is from my experience and common saying in the uk there's more than one way to skin a cat meaning you know i'm not saying my way for sizing pipe work is necessarily the best way, but you know, I've, we've got a document created to help out and assist, you know, perhaps more junior designers to help them along the way as they uh, start their careers as design engineers. Yeah. I love it, James. I really appreciate the time um, you take to do this because I think this is really important just to show uh, how the software works the willingness of give free demos of this software to, for people to try trial versions, which is amazing. So uh, I love that about you, James, Just stand up on that. Hey, no problem at all. It's uh, it's happy to, happy to help Trevor, you know, just as, just as you are and always happy to have these conversations. And, and I think the conversation, I think, you know, we, we I think there's one to get into, not just you and I, I think we could have a real good topic of conversation regarding uh, energy efficiency of different refrigerants and systems yeah. and talking a wide just a discussion group talking about yeah. people's experiences and then let's layer in heat recovery i think there's a real good session to be had we could get some real real good knowledgeable industry experts you know from around the world i think it'd be really really good let's set that up let's do that yeah i think it's really really good because i, I love a conversation like that because at the end of the day we're all engineers we're all here to learn you know and and I think that's that's the main thing for me. It's not being right or wrong. It's it's, it's learning. Exactly. You know, and so that's always a big one for me. Um, I think specifically, I think just a big thank you for everybody. I mean, we're, we're in on the 11th of August. Today's been over 30 degrees in the UK, which is warm for the UK. Um, refrigeration systems tend to be designed for an ambient of 32. So we're up at the knuckle. But it's summertime for everybody around the globe so i really appreciate people joining because this is the busy time of year for this in for our industry we know that so really do appreciate people taking the time you know to take 30 minutes 60 minutes of their own time or their working yeah. day to join us and we'll repeat these sessions as well you know i think there's been in the uk just before we started i was saying to trevor that and a lot of my contacts in the UK, so it's a case of, you know, it's 7 p.m. We could join, but hey, we've been working from 7 a.m. It's pretty full on. It's busy. It's, you yeah. know, it's the last thing people want to do when they're really busy. So I do really appreciate anyone who's who's taken the time and effort to join. Me too. Me too. Really appreciate all that. Really appreciate you, James, for doing it. Next week, part five, final series is going to be using this design software to size the common liquid pipework on a co2 system or even an hfc hfo blend system so super excited to learn about that as well i think let's keep it on let's keep it on the here and now trevor and we'll go with co2 
Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Okay, James, I want to thank you very much. Awesome. I want to thank everyone who attended and we'll see you next week at part five. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.